We're so proud of ourselves, us humans. We tell how smart we are, how we've created empires and demolished ignorance, how we've mastered science and how, we'd con how we've conquered nature. But in our collective pursuit of dominance over all that we think we understand, every one of us and every one of our ancestors has contributed in some way to the, both the creation and the destruction of not only our way of life, but that of the animals that also call this place home. Through depressing research, I'll, I've deepened my understanding of Dayton's homeless cat community, and I interviewed someone actively working to, quote, end the euthanasia of healthy animals due to overpopulation through adoption and education. To depress you as well, I'll first share the local and national statistics illustrating the severity of the issue and how it affects you in ways that you may not realize. Then I'll tell you how fellow Daytonians are making a difference in the lives of these animals and how you too, with little effort or money, can help make our non and can help our non-human neighbors. Without Sarah McLaughlin as a, dra a backdrop, you'll just have to imagine her singing Angel while I give you some of the grim numbers. Of the 50,000 free roaming cats in Montgomery County, only 2.5% are spayed or neutered leaving almost 49,000 free to reproduce and continue the problem of overpopulation. According to the ASPCA's website, quote, of the cats entering shelters nationally, approximately 50% are adopted and 27% are euthanized. But the numbers for the Montgomery County Animal Resource Center, the ARC, are much more staggering. In their year-end report for 2017, the ARC showed that of the almost 1,800 cats brought into their facility in Dayton, over 1,200 were euthanized. That's 68%. Of those euthanized, almost 50 were healthy cats, almost 20 were simply lost, or they died somehow in the shelter. Sure, they adopted out 14% of their cats, but it doesn't seem that great when you compare it to their other numbers, now does it? Besides these heartbreaking statistics, it doesn't quite help to know that the homeless cat problem is created and perpetuated by humankind. There are everyday actions that encourage stray and feral cats to breed, such as leaving trash cans open without lids, and even feeding local cats without a full understanding of the local cat community being fed. And while there are effective ways to manage their numbers, which I'll mention in a moment, the ARC and the local governments contracting with the ARC continue to remove cats from the community simply to euthanize them. Unfortunately, and according to the Humane Society of Greater Dayton's website, this creates a vacuum effect because there's an unclaimed food source. This allows cats to reproduce quickly as the po population seeks a balance with the food source that's available, making the practice a waste of taxpayer money when there's better ways to control the population. <coughs> Turning off Sarah McLaughlin, let's look at some other ways people are making a positive impact on the local cat community. Gem City Kitties, a 501c3 nonprofit was started by Karen Goodall Johnson to provide the incoming cats for the Gem City Cat Fay. I recently sat down with, Gem, with Goodall Johnson at the Cat Fay and discussed some issues related to our cat community, her organization, and what people can do to help. The Gem City Cat Fay, located in St. Anne's Hill on the east side of Dayton, is, according to their website, a cafe space with free Wi Fi serving fair trade coffee tea, and delicious bakery items along with wine and cocktails. They have a separate cat lounge in a comfortable environment where you can visit their 18 adoptable cats and three resident cats, and visitors can grab a coffee and a, drink, a, coffee and a snack and take it into the lounge with them, or they can just simply visit the cats. When I asked about the issues related to the stray and feral cat community that are unique to Dayton, I was surprised by her answer. She said, quote, we have so many animal wel welfare organizations for the size of our city, yet we still haven't made the headway that you would expect to see. Fortunately, her business model tolerates the natural fluctuations in donations with customer purchases at the cafe, and they subsidize the overhead of the operation, allowing the nonprofit to focus on paying for medication and food and litter for the cats. With so many cats and homeless cats in Dayton, it can be difficult to imagine us ever really making a difference and doing enough. But as long as there's folks like Karen Goodall Johnson and Gem City Kitties, we can have hope for the future of our fellow furry Do Daytonians. Right on their website, they say, quote, we envision a Dayton where it's a place for all of our feline friends to be valued, protected, and treated with empathy and compassion. And that's really what should be the focus, right? Of any endeavor in which one espouses a desire to help. We need to recognize the value in something 
and create a space in which we can exercise that empathy and that compassion. By recognizing that we created this problem, we're better prepared to do something about it. Wouldn't it be nice to not need commercials with Sarah McLaughlin singing in the background while images of wide-eyed and forlorn cats and dogs look directly at you while you're watching TV? On top of that, wouldn't it be better if we just spent, if our tax dollars were spent and used more efficiently? A better world is one where we take care of each other. One, but each other doesn't have to only include other people. It can mean whatever it should mean. A few minutes ago, I gave a few minutes ago, I gave some startling statistics on the homeless cat problem in Dayton and how, an organ, how organizations that are supposed to be taking care of cats in our city are literally killing them in overwhelming numbers. Though, I hope I was able to provide some optimism in telling you that Gem City Kitties and Gem City Cat Fay and the work that they do are making that Dayton a better place for our feline friends. Besides the active work they do with local shelters and rescues, Gem City Cat Fay hosts free trap, neuter, and return programs, TNR, that are free uh, certification workshops to teach people the knowledge and skills needed to help the feral and stray cat communities in their areas. Now, I know you may not be, able, be in a position to attend one of them, but I ask that when you hear someone commenting about how many cats there are everywhere in Dayton, tell them about the Gem, about the Gem City Cat Fay and tell them about cat, Gem City Kitties. Tell them about the work they do and that there are humane ways to help minimize how many homeless cats there are in Dayton by attending one of their TNR workshops. Otherwise, I invite you to visit the Gem City Cat Fay and their adoptable cats, unless you're allergic. It's $5 per visit if you purchase a $25 uh, annual membership, or it's a $10 visit for non-members. So whether or not you're a cat person or even a pet person, we all live on this planet. And I want to close with this quote by canine psychologist and author Karen Davison, where I've sub substituted cat in place of dog. Saving one cat will not change the world, but surely for that one cat, the world will change forever. Far too often, the easy thing isn't really the right thing. So we need to recognize the power we each have as individuals to make a difference and then go out and make it so. Thank you.